got Jenner Barbosa trying to uh, get his inner Ryan Dirt Eater on this one. Oh, oh, no. Barbosa was hung up there on the side and took a shot as he was trying to get that hand loose. Good to see him on his feet. Perhaps the frustration really affecting him more than anything right now. And when you look at this pen of balls, this one's probably one of the most rideable ones in it. Just turns back to the left, kicking, spinning, maybe a little step forward, but a lot more rideable than some of these other ones that we're seeing. And that might have been one that Justin McBride thought was a, sh a sure thing and, and probably going to be a little disappointed in that. Fresh off the plane, and we've seen it happen so many times in the past to lead to greatness. Come on, Carvalho! Gets Nashville on the board. And it's a big one. Another huge moment right here in PBR Teams. Yeah, and it was at the right time. If you want to take the wind out of the sails from your opposition team, just after they've done a great ride, you have to do this exact thing right here. Make a ride right after it, so they think their game is not over. Look, these teams are they're in a dog fight right now, and if you're in a fight, it's punch, counter punch, and we just saw the counter punch from Bruno, the National Stampede. He's sitting six in PBR Brazil right now. 51% riding percentage, and you're seeing that success play out here. Nashville on the board with that 87 and a half. And he, bu he bucks off last night, so we'll see what happens here. It looked to be Taylor's tonight, but gets back on that rope and hand pops out six and 99 that clock stops so uh, a lot of folks might have had question marks as to why you throw mason taylor back into that rewrite opportunity knowing that that mvp is out of the equation and i think that this is a moment where justin mcbride uses this as a confidence builder and says look hey kid i know you can go out there and ride one and this is still mason taylor getting reps you see cody lambert talking to him there he's still fresh off of uh Returning the competition, more bulls he gets on, the better he's going to get. Four bulls qualified rides right there for Texas. First time we've had four qualified rides in a game this season. 347 and a half to 87 and a half. Texas making a statement in Cheyenne. Well, Carolina, Manhan, his dancing partner. Some different moves from Mahan and Silvano comes sailing down at three and 23, but Nashville is still alive. I agree with you, Brendan. I think the longer that he is in that shoot, the more it wavers in favor of the bull. I, I think that Silvano is so incredibly talented. You saw that bull row flying up in the crowd. Yeah, there might be a splash zone at SeaWorld, but right here, those first couple rows you might get a bull rope flying at Souvenir you. Souvenir from the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's just so talented I, I wish he would get it right a little bit quicker and get out and just we could see just so many yeah, great moments I from Silvano. I mean, things can happen right there I mean if that ball moves or bucks in the shoot with that little time ago that changes the whole concept but it's a very good decision to put him on this ball and see how it goes. Whoa. You blink and you miss it. Clock stops in one and 29, and Lucas feeling the effects of that one. Yeah, Manava wasted no time. Hey, this isn't good for the Nashville Stampede. Oh. When, you, when you talk about teams that are seeing in that replay, Matty kicked the stock on tractor right in the elbow out of the buck and Watch shoot. Watch this. Oh. oh. Brendan, check me if I'm wrong. You hear a lot of terminology used by bull riders when they say, he beat me out of there. That bull beat him out of the chute. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely you're right. And, and, and you know, like I said, he wasted no time to get to his performance. As soon as that chute gate cracked open, you can see he didn't even get out of the bucking chute. He was already kicking over the back of the bucket chute, trying to kick the elbows off the stock contractor. So yeah, it's man, he was, he was faster today, that's for sure. Knows that he's ready. 
Look at it, shades of his debut in Nashville when he stepped up for his team and won it in front of the home crowd. Now his team needed him in a huge way. And what does he do? Rises up and gets on the board. And stacking them up for his personal career as well. Ride number 484. Incredible. That's amazing. And Brendan, you talked a little bit about what he's done over his career. Obviously, we know about the three world titles, but closing in on that huge 500 ride, Mark, what a what just an incredible statement. 85 and a quarter, Nashville's on the board. Get some reps and get some confidence. Cutting torch is the bull. Picks up his first qualified ride in this season's team series, and it's a big one. And in bull riding, the most important thing you can do is try your heart out. And that is exactly what we've seen there. This is not going to be the highest score that we've seen, but what it is is a score on the board because all it was was grit and determination. You go back to the first time, that guy right there, Justin McBride, won a world title. What did he do? He held on. That's all he did was hang on to the side of Camo to win that first gold buckle. He heard him telling his guy there, just hang on, just hang on. So he has been offered to re-ride. He has been offered to re-ride, and it's sounding like, it's sounding like he is going to use the same rider for the re-ride. However, he's asking Jenner Barbosa for the translation. Hold on. Man, oh man, does the Nashville Stampede have a stacked lineup? The champ comes out on top. What a ride for Alves. Nashville's on the board. And this bull took a couple of big long jumps and got him leaned back a little bit. And it took a fight to the left and around to the right, but what I'm loving to see from Silvano Alves is, is the old Silvano Alves. The, the, the world champion that won three championships, he is was one of the best we've ever seen, and, and this is what it was like week in and week out all the way through his career. That ball takes long jumps, but once he turns back to the right, that's the Silvano Alves that Justin McBride is betting on at the end of his roster every single week. You, you talk about Al Alves getting towards the end of his career and, and being kind of reignited by these youngsters. Mason Taylor, Jess Lockwood, Kaiki Pacheco is in the building here today. I mean, they've got their group here, and, and you can see they're starting to have a little bit more personality. And now, one of the great things about this concept is if you look back, and, and they would have kept that score a moment ago, they'd have the lead, but... I know, I know all the old school bull riding fans will say you got to get rid of that score and take the re-ride. And that has been McBride's mentality. He's baking on Barbosa, but Carolina. You got to wonder, did he really have it on his mind? Knowing dinner, I bet he did. Oh, yeah. Wow. Slung down, takes a Whoa. shot. And remember, Barbosa injured earlier this weekend in similar fashion, and now takes yet another shot. Yeah, and he's been limping around all weekend. That knee has really been bothering him. I asked him this morning, I said, how's it feeling? And he said, honestly, it's still sore. And I go back to the conversation with McBride and, and I'm trying to talk to Anelio a little bit earlier. And he said, you know what? Dinner, dinner's hurt and still willing to get on there for his team. And we're going to see where it all went wrong right here. Obviously, that's going to be the buck off. But Nashville will very much be searching for depth. We've talked about all their top contenders who are already on the bench, sidelined with injury, and now we might be looking at another, but. Let's go in, let's go in! Go in, go in, go in, go in! Come on, Ed! You started to hear 
the frustration, and now another one comes down early, 3 and 62. Well, we, we talked about this before several times. All that Justin McBride expects from his guys is to try as hard as they can. He doesn't want them sitting around in the bucket shoot. You can't win the bull ride and sitting in the bucket shoot. It's more like big, strong, around to the right and just jumps forward and jerks him down. I mean, this game is for real, but one of the best in the business ever to do it is your coach. And when he, you're making him mad and you want, he's wanting you to get out of the shoot, you've got to start paying attention to one of the best in the business because it's coming from a, the emotions coming from him wanting you to win, and they need to feed off that. I think his exact words were, he's standing like a statue. And he was well, right. He was not wrong, Flint. Go, he says! That's the guy we saw this summer, Matt. That's right. DeSouza gets the job done. His first out as a member of the Nashville Stampede. He finds the whistle in a must-ride situation. Well, I can tell you now, if Justin McBride is up above you like a parrot on your shoulder telling you to get out of there, you've got to make sure you do everything you can to get out of there and stay on for eight seconds. That guy is so passionate tonight, and I love seeing that. It's another good ride, and they needed it to come right at the perfect time. Look at the effort. I mean, he was way to the outside there, and used that free arm to get back to the middle. I mean, this guy... It, look, he's proven that he's a gamer. He's willing to do what it takes. Did it for his team here tonight. Painkiller was the name of the bull, and it's an 87 and a half. Nashville still has to get one more ride, but 87 and a half on the board. One, board with me. one thing about it is nobody has been put on the clock more than Silvano Alves. Get up and get it! Get up and get it! finds the whistle. Is it enough to walk it off and serve up the first win of the season for Nashville? I don't really think it is, Kate. I do think this is the Silvano we love seeing, and I did mention that sometimes he makes them look easy. I don't know how many you're going to be, and I don't care. That's a really good ride. Really Amen. Took the words right out of my mouth. I that could is not amazing. Agree more. Could not agree more. And from a bull rider standpoint, I want your... I want your opinion, and I think this is a good challenge. J.W. Hart are going to throw the challenge flag in there and see if I, – I'm going to assume that he's going to be looking at that free arm because sometimes that free arm gets a little low. Luke? Coach, we've seen that challenge flag thrown. What are you looking for right here? Well, I I was kind of behind this board at one point, so uh, – but my coaching staff said they thought they'd seen a slap. So. Well, the thing about the coaching staff is there's a lot of eyeballs here, and they know when to have a chance to throw that challenge flag. If you go back to last season, the Ridge Riders and Luciano DeCastro, we saw this happen three or four times in this season in a similar situation. And they're good. Now, we don't see a clock from that vantage point right there, so I don't know at what point we see the contact, but... Yeah, we're being told it is a qualified ride. It is no slap, so score of 87 and a quarter, but it is not enough to win the game. They fall short. Nashville takes another heartbreaking loss, and Kansas City picks up their fourth straight win. Wow. And for the Nashville Stampede, they're hoping the same thing. Oh, on the dirt, takes a shot. U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team goes into work, keeps Alves safe, now up on his feet, but moving slowly, sports medicine now moving in as well. Yeah, and once he got up, he got over the shoots, but don't like how long he was there. I mean, it, it looked hopefully worse than what it's going to end up being, and you can see him kind of shaking off sports men. But watch this when we go back here to this replay. When he hits the dirt, watch this bull's back legs because finds himself in a pretty compromising situation. And, and Kate, I thought you were right. I thought this was going to be four in a row. But watch this bull's back legs right there. And there as well. And I think that's the one that really kind of stuck him down in there. And you can see 
Alves just so slow to get to his feet. Those bullfighters, the U.S. Border Patrol safety team, taking that bull's attention away and letting Silvano get out of there. It's Justin McBride. You know, Justin, we've talked about injuries and lineups and strategies, and you haven't won a game yet, but you got a great city behind you. It's a great sports town. Maybe this energy is just what you guys need for a little boost. Well, I hope so, yeah. No, we're in, look, I'm probably a little biased, but this is the best home event that there's going to be all season long. The, the crowd here, the fans here, they are second to none. They, they love this sport. They've, they've supported it in Nashville for a long time, 30 years now, and now having their own team, they really get behind it. And, yeah, I hope the boys appreciate that and feed off of that tonight. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, buddy. Thank He's really, really looking for this guy to come through. Sent flying early, comes off in three seconds and change. Knucklehead's got some power to send Carvalho through the air like that. You know, we just can't talk enough about the bull power and trying to match these guys up to what's gonna work. But when you get bulls like this that consistently are 44s, 45s, it's just the DAC is stack, stacked against the bull riders so bad, but these guys just keep trying to find a way to improve. And with the help of these coaches, they're gonna get there, but right now, they're falling behind. Game number four is still scoreless here on Friday night as the three-time world champion, Silvano Alves. <laughs> We're being told it is being reviewed. This one is not over just quite yet. Look, I don't know if my heart can handle these theatrics right now. I don't need this kind of drama in my life. What I do need is the magic of Silvano Alves riding to win for his team. Watching that left hand. Watching that left hand to see if he makes contact with that bull. And if he gets to the eight seconds, this this building is going to go crazy. It's good, guys. And there it is. Pure emotion. It's our Stillhouse Vodka Unbreakable moment. Alves, 88 points aboard Wicked Ways. The three-time champ does it once again when it matters most. Nashville picks up their first win of the season. And now retired, but still a Stampede member. Sosa comes down, you already see red flags. Those come from the officials, so that means there will be a re-ride awarded to Nashville. In the PBR Camping World Team Series, a re-ride means a coach can then decide to put the same rider back on the re-ride bull or go with another. So Alan DeSouza will be getting the nod again. A lot, of, a lot of discussion going on. Who's going to get on this re-ride? Talk to McBride. Who are you putting on the re-ride? Same guy. Yeah. It fits the bull good. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, you got to ride the bull. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, anytime our guys are healthy enough to go again, they are going to get on the re-ride. Well, Cam spent too much time in there. He tried to move quickly to get back to center, but comes down here in just two and 88. Nashville still searching to get on the board. There's a reason bulls like that have yet to be rode. Guys have trouble figuring them out. When they're this big, this strong, kick that hard, 
it's a hard task. Las Vegas replay showing you right there, not just is this bull perfect in his record, 45 and a quarter points. Again, a huge bull score, and the performance of that animal athlete, just spectacular here. Part of a different lineup, but he loves being a part of the stampede. Oh. Not going to love this at all. Down early, comes forward and takes a hit. The Maverick brought some power. I've had the opportunity to talk to Matt in the last little bit, and the thing is, is I'm expecting it to change, and I keep expecting it because Matt's attitude for a little while was he wasn't too sure, you know, where he was in bull riding in his career, and all of a sudden he's been rejuvenated and feels like he, he loves bull riding, he wants to do it, but it's just not working out. The physical aspect is just not following his mental game right now. Calm in this scenario. Nashville is on the board first, and Caden Loud picks up the first qualified ride of his PBR team's career. You can't tell me Justin McBride did not know what he was doing. If you throw somebody into the fire long enough, they get tired of getting burned, and they step out and answer the call. McBride was calm because he was confident, but eight seconds later, as excited as he's been in his coaching career, because this 18-year-old just stole the show in Music City. And he is awarded 90 points for the effort. First qualified ride in his career. Seven seconds and change. Everyone inside Bridgestone Arena seemed to be riding with De Souza, but he comes down early. It's an uncomfortable quiet in this building right now because they were ready to come alive for their hometown team. And, and, and Alan De Souza giving them about seven seconds worth to cheer about here. At the end of this ride, you see him start to get loosened up and get to that outside and just cannot hang on. And that is the difference between the Bulls we're seeing here and the typical Bulls we see in the regular games. I mean, you're going to have to step your game up a little bit. He's got to hurry right now. Uh -oh. Hand. doing exactly what they signed him on the stampede to do he gets him on the board it's got to be an 88 and a quarter to take the lead look you really are cheering for your guys i mean Man. you're not holding back you're just a, a fan like everybody else you really have bought in you are a part of the stampede family oh i love it, it it's the energy it's fun and he made a great ride away from his hand it was perfect. We got ourselves a game right now. There you go, one to one. Alan De Souza stepping up. You said it opposite way of his hand. He said lights out. That's one. Let's get all of it out of him. Let him do it out there. Let's go. Let's go. Set up. Set up his spurs. Silvano gets the ride. Will it be enough for the Stampede to get the win? I love that Coach McBride said, go out there and get as much as you can out of it. I told you, we've never seen this bull give the numbers that Silvano and Nashville needed, but we've never seen him matched up like today. He did it. it. Yes. 89 points. Silvano walks it off. Silvano, that's the champ. Nashville Stampede, great job. That's why he's in the closer position. He went fast in there. Bull had a great day. He rode him great. Yeah, really good job. Really good job. Very good. You want to get out of the way so the other team can come in? Hey, Justin McBride, your guy. How about the old man, Silvano Alves? Just keeps scrambling for you. Yeah. Hey, look. There's a reason the guy's a three-time world champion. Is he a lot older now? Absolutely, but he's still got okay. the heart of a champion. He's still got a lot of guts, and you can put a game on his shoulders still. A little momentum on a Friday doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. And look, we had a lot of missed opportunities in that game. Uh, Wellington, the new guy that we brought in, he had a chance to ride a great bull and was making a great ride. 
just a little bit of a mental error there and, and made it be harder than it needed to be. Congrats. Thank you. Scott, you got to take us back to the start on this one. Yeah, please. Tell me what just happened. Well, I'm trying to figure it out myself. The first thing I caught is as he's nodding, somebody else is holding his free hand. I noticed that too, Scott. I'm glad you pointed that out. I'm kind of waiting for the replay on that. And we just looked at each other a little bit dumbfounded here as this happened. And Who is that? Do you recognize the hand? I believe that's Silvano Alves. Oh, yeah. yep. Let me ask you something. Hypothetically, is that to keep him from reaching back and holding on to the back of that buck and shoot? There's definitely a theory to their madness there on exactly that. It's something. But to me, it wasn't working what needed, and it was just maybe a little too much. over 50 percent this season and incredible what he's accomplishing as a member of the nashville stampede look no further than the oldest guy on the roster to lead by example and step up and just continuing to show you talk about the youth that can learn from him well they're going to learn a lot because no matter what the situation alvez is putting out production for his team and i am confident in saying he is riding the best he's rode since he won his last world title, and it's been a few years now. He's just rose into this occasion. The team's format suits him to a T. They went out, they found a left-handed guy named Wellington, and uh, they really like him so far. He's a board dirty B, and he goes the distance. Nashville gets on the board. You can start to understand why Justin McBride likes him. Right here on this ride, we talk about guys wanting left-handers and right-handers because bulls will turn different ways and people are stronger in that. And most of the time, as Luke referred to earlier, most bull riders like the bulls to turn back into their hand better. And a bull like this has got unbelievable timing, perfect. And this is a great matchup because it allows him to get a win, not just for the team, but for this young man himself to build confidence. We said it earlier, Silvano Alves needs a little help. His celebration even looks like uh, Silvano there kind of pounding his chest. Good score there, 84 and three quarter points. And get out of the shoot before that clock counts to zero. There's the nod. He made it around the corner, and he takes it all the way. DeSouza sails to eight, and Nashville gets another one. And so there you go. They benefit from that rewrite opportunity earlier, and we and we knew numbers-wise he should be able to get by this bull. But again, a bull going away from his hand, it's, it's very difficult to make happen. But we are hearing that it is under official review to make sure he still had contact with that rope at the requisite eight. Gonna be at the end, Westy. Right, right here. Whoop! Stop it, back it up. Or contact okay. with the bull. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be close, so though. close. Come on, come on, come on, bump it. Whoop! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, he gets a marking, guys. You want to talk about splitting hairs right there? Ty goes to the runner, though. In this scenario, in every scenario, Ty goes to the runner. Good thing Whiplash was not fluffy. It's a really good ride. Don't get lazy. Stay up there. Stay up there. That's why we practiced for 10 seconds. For that. You're going to be a great, great bull rider. Hey, hey. Good job being tough today. It's all right there. McBride has to be satisfied. 18 seconds. Here we go. Come on, dinner.
Oh, ring that dinner bell. Eight seconds, but... Ha! Ah, back to the replay we go. Looking for a... It's good. It's good. It's a qualified ride for Nash. And the champions, the Nashville Stampede, the first ones on the board here at 84 and three quarters. Now, can Missouri now to come back here? Still a long way. Taylor, can he finally ride this bull? Here we go. Oh, out. My goodness, is it a full moon out there? My, wow. Mason Taylor. If he, if he didn't get enough first time, there it is, the second. And then, wow. Gets a qualified ride for Nashville. Now, his fourth time matching up with Montana Jacket. What is it? Barbosa backs up the ride with another scary moment there, but gets on his feet. He is 2-0 in his return. And here we go. It's punch, counter punch. Austin gets on the board first. Nashville cannot let that momentum swing too far away from him. This was a matchup that had win in the Bulls' favor three times previously. And Coach McBride said, you know what? I still believe in dinner. I know this Bulls got his number. But look at this Las Vegas Jim Cam. Right down to the eight seconds money all day for Barbosa. Yeah, and he had to do that. There was no other option for him. He needed to stay on because they can't not let this uh, Austin Gamblers team get too far away in front of them and they, they needed a score right there and that was exactly what coach Justin McBride was needing. He's got a lot of help there, Kaike Pacheco, Darren Barbosa, both trying to help him up as that clock ticks down. DeSouza is dialed in and the Stampede moved one full bull ahead of the number one team in the league. And this is the things I've been always talking about. This is what they need to do. They need to get scores on the board and be able to take the pressure off their last, their number five rider. It's not all up to him. They don't want to leave it up to him every week, especially if you're up against a team like the Austin Gamblers. Where's that door at, Matt? It, it, look, it's wide open now because Nashville's got a huge lead and all they've got to do is just keep the momentum going. I love this. They went out, they got Alan DeSouza as a free agent. Coach McBride loving that move by his team right now because take a look at the numbers with 85 points. They now have a full bull lead on the number one team in the league. is another one. The three-time world champ steps up for his team, gets the ride, and Nashville gets a win. And I feel like by watching Silvano Alves, this is the Silvano Alves that did win them three, three, the three world titles. It looks like he looks very polished on the back of balls, very much in control, and that's what he can do for this team if he continues to ride like that. They're going to continue to win. Guys, I'm down here with Coach Justin McBride. You sit Kaiki Pacheco tonight. That was my storyline coming in, going out. It's still Silvano Alves. Yeah, you know what? Look, there's everybody's been wanting Kaiki to get back, myself included. But there's a lot of other guys on this team, and, and they've each got to step up at the right times. And, you know, Dinner did a great job tonight. Allen did a great job tonight. And then Silvano just put the nail in the coffin. You know, that's why he's a three-time world champion, a team champion. Uh, and that's why he's our closer. Huge win. Big time. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. Nashville 1-1, one one, Austin 0-2 here, still a 
day of play left for both teams, but take a look back at this one. Just textbook from the pro. Yeah, absolutely. Total control. There was no point, no, no chance at all during this ride that he was going to get bucked off, especially when they turn back to the right like that. But that's what the team needed, and that is what I love about it so much. Is it didn't matter what the score was going to be, but he had to make the eight-second whistle, and that's exactly what he did. He said, can't really do much more damage to it. We're going to try it on Washington all Red. Quickly slung off, and the right hand instantly goes to the groin that you're talking about. So just when Nashville's thinking they have all their starters back, perhaps not quite. But he said, he did tell me, he said, when I get done today, you're going to see me limp off. And he said, don't think too much about it. There's a lot of scar tissue in there that needs broken up. He said, Doc told me it's going to hurt for a while, but we're going to keep fighting through this. And hopefully by the time we get to Las Vegas, everything's going to feel a little bit better. That's what he told me. You're shaking your head. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm shaking my head because I've been through the same thing. And I, right. I do know the right. pain he's in and I do know it is going to hurt. But what, what I was shaking my head at was more along the lines of it's it's not like he can rest this so he can just get around it between now and Las Vegas. So right. he's going to be in a lot of pain up until that point, but it's not it's not going to heal anymore between him and there. So it's that's what the hard thing is. Single digits now. Slam to the outside and slow to get up. Another seven second buck off. And another brutal dismount for the Nashville Stampede. Another guy that is feeling the, the pops as their general manager, Tina Baddock, said so eloquently the other day. I mean, they're beat up. We often hear the crowd in here as the slams happen, but we can't actually feel it. Brendan, the best you can, Describe 1,800 pounds slamming you to the ground. There's no give in that dirt. No, there's absolutely not. And I mean, the only thing worse than that is when a bull's foot comes down on top of you like that. So there isn't, but when you hit the ground that hard, the only thing I could explain would be if you stood on the top of a uh, set of stairs and just dived off onto your back, that would be about what it would feel like. I mean, it-, it To a sidewalk. Sit, to a sidewalk on concrete. Yeah. This guy right here, I mean, there's a reason why he's still down. I mean, yeah, you see guys get up and, and potentially run away or crawl away, but that's just reaction that does that. I mean, the pain doesn't go away. Down to three, gotta go. Say no more. The three-time champ rises once again, gets the ride, and Nashville gets the win. You ask if anybody thought he would have the impact he has had. I can tell you definitively, at the beginning of last season, no one and no team in the league thought he would have this kind of impact. Halfway through, Justin McBride picked him up as a free agent, gave him an opportunity, and he has continued to come in clutch for the champion stampede. This season is huge, but in his career, that is ride number 495. Unbelievable. He has had an unbelievable career, and he's still doing at the end of his career, and that is what it, I think is so important for this Nashville team because he continues to put numbers on the board. What a ride, what a win for the Nashville Stampede. They stay in it, they move to two and one. DeSouza stayed with him almost for eight. They'll go back and take a look at this, but what you got also not like is the way He's walking out after this one. It's a banged up stampede squad and clock looks good. DeSouza looks to have taken a hit as well. Okay, get ready right here, Sean. Here, here. Can't say it, can't see it there. Okay. Back up. I kinda need some ground now. Okay, come on. Talk Bring about it. the Bring effort. It. Bring it. Stop it right there. No score. Seven nine eight. No his score. His toe? Uh, his toe in the dirt. Yep, that's what cost him. Flex it. Bend your knee. Don't point it. Ah. Uh, this disappointing. Though you don't like to see here. Remember a week ago? Nashville. Happiest locker room getting back Mason Taylor, Kaiki Pacheco, Dinner Barbosa. They already have Silvano Alves. They already have Alan DeSouza. 
Both Mason and Taylor Kike Pacheco out of the lineup. Now Alan DeSouza walking back with Sportsmed. Yeah. Their two top guys left to go. But is it too little too late? They need the ride. And dinner does it. He had to step up and get the ride to keep his team alive. And he makes it happen. And this is where we're going to see whether that decision to keep that re-ride for Texas is going to come into play because now with the one qualified ride, we only need one more from Nashville and two buck-offs for the Texas team. And that re not taking that re-ride might not be the smartest decision, but that's how it's going to play out for the final couple of rides. The snots are slinging, the dirt's are flying, 84 and three quarters. The nod right now. Again and again and again, Alves on fire this season. How about that, Nashville? Surely enough to take the lead. What's most unbelievable is last season he was a free agent. They picked him up out of nowhere and he immediately started the way that he finished here tonight. He came in and instantly was productive for the Nashville Stampede. You keep him down to the wire, he's the number five guy, and you see the three-time champ of the world step up again. 86 and a half, it's plenty to take the lead. Yeah, and, and you know, something interesting to me, it looks like, Fleet, you're down there with him, but that Nashville team seems to be breathing a sigh of relief right now. That is, that is, Brennan, that's exactly what they were doing. You look three bulls ago, this thing was done. It was 161 to nothing. But like we said, Denner Barbosa and Silvano Alves, your last two guys, not a bad thing to look down to. Career ride number 496 for the three-time champ. How much it takes to actually call for the gate to open in that, in that position. Make note of Mason Moody. The 20 year old gets on the board for Nashville to keep Arizona, keep Nashville rather, right in the middle of this one with the Ridge Riders. Yeah, and Mason Moody at 20 years, a, uh, years of age is definitely going to be a force for this team if he continues to put rides like that back to back because this is a great ball, turns back into his hand and Mason Moody has done exactly, Justin McBride could see something in this and I tell you what, Justin McBride from Nebraska, South, uh, uh, South Dakota tough farm boy as he probably put him and I'll tell you what, with rides like that I think we're going to see him in the lineup a lot more often. And just how tough, you saw the contact right after the whistle, riding through that one first career ride of PBR teams for Moody. He's been on the Nashville roster for about 48 hours total this week, and I think he just solidified his spot. Everything about that, the shoot procedure, the ride, I think everything we just watched solidified his spot with the Stampede. Part of a different lineup, but he loves being a part of the Stampede. Oh. Not going to love this at all. Down early comes forward and takes a hit. The Maverick brought some power. I've had the opportunity to talk to Matt in the last little bit, and the thing is, is I'm expecting it to change, and I keep expecting it because Matt's attitude for a little while was he wasn't too sure, you know, where he was in bull riding in his career, and all of a sudden he's been rejuvenated and feels like he, he loves bull riding, he wants to do it, but it's just not working out. The physical aspect is just not following his mental game right now. What a great cowboy story. Ranch kid from South Dakota. Confidence after last night. See if it carries over. Seemed look left quickly after leaving the shoots, and that's the way he went. Big Bank, though, he was not done. U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team still out in the arena going to work. Those three have been busy right here in an arena that is about three times the size of our typical setup. Yeah, and they've definitely been, like I said, all weekend, they've been very, very busy keeping these guys healthy as they can. And you see right here, a good, 
that's that's teamwork. Just that the is. triangle right there. That's as good as it comes. Guys, that's incredible. Austin Ashley, Nathan Harp, Lucas Teodoro. In the absence of Cody Webster here this weekend, Nathan Harp, Austin Ashley kind of in the rotation. Lucas Teodoro is a, a constant here on this tour. But guys, we've got such an incredibly talented group. Doesn't matter who's in there, they're the best in the business. Nods at the buzzer, takes him to the eight second buzzer. Alves gets on the board. It's got to be better than 87 to stay in the game. Yeah, and I think that putt's going to be enough. But the, the thing I like right here is that smile from Justin McBride. And we did talk about what he means. They mean to each other and what Silvano means to this team. And he continues to do what Justin McBride is expecting of him. And that is what needs to bleed into the rest of these competitors in that team because he got a bad start right here. This is not how he wanted to do it. He didn't want to nod with his head at that ball laying on the ground. But it worked out perfectly. And Silvano Alves does exactly what he's done so many times this season for this Nashville team. And Alves now just three rides away from career ride. 500 but it's not enough to take the lead in this one it is enough however to make sure his nashville stampede do not get shut out for the fifth time this season we're hearing discussion now though they've got an option for a re-ride oh, I, I think they're in a position kate where they don't have an option whether they can take it or not they're gonna have to because Let's just say Kansas City bucks off, but Flint, you got anything down there? Yeah, they were given an option for a re-ride. So they're just gonna hey, they're gonna let Silvano hey, catch his breath. Hey, they're they're, they're down. Look at champ! Ends on top, gets a huge ride board cliffhanger. It's going to be a close one. Well, there may have been a little bit of a question mark on whether that was a good situation and a great re-ride ball for Silvano Alves, but the emotion right there tells you everything, that he had no doubt in his mind that he could do it. He took one score off the board, and again, we talk about the twilight of his career, but these scores don't mean any of that. He took a score off the board that would not have won the game, and now he walks it off. 88 and a quarter, the champ wins it. And Justin McBride yelling at his younger members of his team one thing. That is how you take the game into your hands and step up when your team needs you. Nashville pulling off a win. They end the weekend one and two. What conversation between two world champions there to end this one. And for Kansas City, they also go to one and two on the weekend. He's, his attitude does all of the talking and it speaks volumes. Welcome to the party in Greensboro, Outlaw Nation. Chase is on the board for his new team. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to run the math and, and crunch the numbers quickly. And now Chase Outlaw, as a Nashville stampede, is riding 100%. Am I right? <laughs> You're right. And that is 100% why Justin McBride went out and helped bring a little energy to his team. That completely changes the dynamic. And now do we have the one-two punch with Outlaw and Alves. 85 points awarded for the effort. Not enough to get the lead, but enough to get some energy going on that Stampede sideline. And this is something new for Nashville right here because now they've got momentum early, not at the end. And Luke is right there with probably a much happier head coach. Coach Justin McBride, Chase Outlaw, welcome to the Nashville Stampede. I mean, that had to be exciting for your team to see your leadoff started off like that. Yeah, hey, look, Outlaw is exciting for the guys to see from first thing in the morning till the time he rides whenever in the locker room. You know, he's a, he's a fireball, and, and that's a big part of the reason when we were able to sign him, we took advantage of it. 
just because not only the ability to, to make good rides like you just saw, but his attitude, the toughness that he brings, and, and it's just a different energy that Outlaw brings. Well, he showed it right there, and hopefully you carry on with the rest of your team. Less than 25 seconds to go. He's got to get out. Here we go. Pass to Ryder. Texas gets the win. He was there to the left, seemed oh. to make the moves necessary to the right. And those loud noises coming out of Matt is because that was very close. Sorry, I forgot my mic was on. <laughs> I got caught up in the moment and, and watching. Dinner, and again, it's because a guy like Dinner Barbosa has been through so much. I mean, the back injury, came back with the knee injury. And, and now to see a guy kind of getting back in the rotation, that is a scary sight to see. Wrong place, wrong time. Glad to see he got out of there. And with that buck off, Texas gets the win, and they still have two outs remaining. Still searching for a qualified ride. Found one in Ridgedale, but beyond that, yeah, it's been a slew of buck offs. And it's another here. That's been a couple back-to-back -back buck offs where that U.S. Border Patrol protection team has quickly gone to work. Yeah, these guys, I say this every single night. They're hey, say amazing. it over yeah. and over again. They, they deserve it all. My point is I could say it through the entire broadcast and it wouldn't be enough. Take a look at this. Nathan Harp, Lucas Teodoro, Cody Webster. These guys, these three together are just so amazing to watch. And thankfully they're all here because Joe Henry was in a little bit of a compromising situation. And just focus on what's in front of you today. And for Bruno, got to make it good. comes alive on the East Coast. Bruno, best homeboy in Nashville, gets another one. And maybe I just have to say it, that I'm disappointed with some of the riders and the next one step up. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's one of them things that this game never ceases to amaze me of how we can just go from a situation where the tempo is real low, we semi-injure a person, and then these riders have the ability to step up to the plate and do that, it amazes me. And that is Carvalho's first qualified ride since his first out of the season back in Cheyenne, and it's a big one. 88 and a half, the best we've seen so far in this game. I have to nod with him, but this can actually be an advantage his way because this bull has to stand up to Ooh. leave there, just like that, gonna turn back to the left. This is gonna be the game right here. And he does it again. Alves on fire this season for the Stampede. Sing it big. That is ride 498 in his career. Nothing like a ride like that for the three-time world champ to remind all of us how good he still is. He takes that bull laying all the way down. Watch this incredible job by Silvano Alves. And the way that that bull leaps up out of there and then just turns back to the right into his hand, it is game over as soon as that bull gets on his feet. And what was so impressive, as I said, that can be an advantage for the rider because most of the bulls, when they just stand up like that, they just stand up and kick just nice. That bull stood up and, I mean, kicked the lights out. That was really good. Outlaw wanted to get on bulls every single day. Stampede on the board and Chase is fired up as he's ever been. He becomes just the 35th rider in PBR history to hit the huge milestone of 200 rides. And I want to tell you real quick why that is so much bigger than the number is actually going to reflect. You think about Outlaw's career. Think about the adversity he has had to overcome. More importantly, think about all of the times that injuries have kept him on the sidelines, missing months and months at a time. To still be able to get back and make that career milestone is amazing. Well done, Chase Outlaw. Great bull riders are built 
from how they react to different situations. And this was the reaction that we all expected. He'd had no success with that bowl before. He says, give him to me again, coach. Huge reaction, great ride. Injuries have kept him sidelined again. Salai is the matchup today. with another one for the Stampede. Two up, two qualified rides. Now, they're looking like that championship team that McBride's been searching for. I totally expected that. I thought this bull was gonna fit him, and this is what we've been, they, Coach McBride has just been asking of him, is just give me the effort every time. The bull I put you on, all we need is the whistle. And not only does he get the whistle, he's gonna get a really good score here. 86 and a quarter awarded for the effort, but the effort also comes with getting banged up as you see the grimace on his face as he makes his way over the steel. Good for Silvano Alves in the Nashville Stampede. The Defini Jamps get on the board. It's got to be 85 and a half or better to stay in this one. Yeah, not only is he getting one step closer to 500, he's getting the lead for his team here and putting pressure on Keyshawn Whitehorse. Absolutely. And one thing you always have to notice about Silvano is he is the most patient and never lets things rattle him. Anybody else when the shoot clock is at two is panicking and nodding. He's like, I still got a second. Slides up, nods, and is guaranteed gonna give him the lead right here. 86 and three quarters keeps his team alive. And it all comes down to eight seconds for the home team. And maybe I'm getting caught up in the moment, but I think that could have been a little bit higher of a score, too. Uh, uh, Silvano Alves stepping up there and making a fantastic ride. And again, we talk about the bond between him and McBride. You see him pointing up to the coach. I got you. I got you. A lot more opportunity with the Stampede. Ooh! An outlaw possibly thankful that he met up with safety meeting a little later in this bull's career because when he first came onto the scene, this bull would have had a much different reaction to a guy laying in front of him. Yeah, you didn't want to lay in front of this one or he would have reminded you that he was there. But we talk about bulls when they hit and then their front feet hit the ground and then they what they call push back. And that's exactly what happened there. And this bull just drapes Chase out over the front. And I didn't see that coming. And I guarantee the only person more surprised is Chase. Outlaw very surprised and obviously going to be disappointed in that one, but he'll return to help his teammates momentarily. Can they strike back? Terrifying dismount for Jenner Barbosa. Crawfish Richard came crashing down. Midsection of Dinner and his entire team left holding their breath. Our sports medicine team out on the arena floor. There's a good look at Coach Justin McBride. And we know the reality of the dangers of this sport but when you take a look at a guy that has been through so much and you can see the anguish on his face you know it's serious it really is you know in, in bull riding everybody understands that their injuries are going to occur and they're going to be involved but you never want to see them and you hope they never happen and especially at this level and and to this extreme You can see the looks on the faces of an absolutely stunned audience here in attendance. His teammates, they're stunned as well. The difficult reality of this sport is his teammates will still have a job to do when we return to action. A situation like this, you see the bullfighters there, our U.S. Border Patrol protection team. Nothing they could do. 
And while we continue to allow sports medicine all the time they need to assess Dinner Barbosa's situation, we will step away and we will return in just a few moments to Glendale. Moments ago, this was the scene. Dinner Barbosa after a very scary dismount up and on his feet walking out of this arena under the assistance of our incredible sports medicine team that continues to be with us week in and week out. And this is the moment that led to everyone in this arena being stunned. And so Dan just making a really good ride here. And what happens is right here, his hand hangs in the rope a little bit, both back feet come down. And luckily it was not a direct hit, but make no mistake, he still knows that he was just underneath a 2,000 pound bucking bowl. And make no mistake about it, that was a great sight seeing him walk out of this arena just a couple of moments ago while we were away at break. 13 qualifications to the world finals. Will this be number 500? Five hundred will have to wait until tomorrow afternoon, when you've got to believe that we will once again see Alves chasing history. How impressive have have these last couple of seasons been for Silvano Alves, a guy that has basically rejuvenated his career? It's been so exciting for me to watch because everybody. The naysayers, even fellow bull riders, truthfully believed he was at the very tail end of his career and almost done. And then when Justin McBride asked him to come to Nashville, it just totally rejuvenated him. He got in the position to become a leader, a role model for the young kids, and he's just stepped up and done amazing things. And look who's right there in his ear the whole time. is on top in the desert first on the board against number one austin that's not gonna hurt too bad time to celebrate outlaw nation well chase outlaw didn't know the bull but everybody else did and that's why they were so excited they knew they had possibly an even a better opportunity to get a big score on the board and outlaw delivers gets past that first jump takes it all the way to the distance. You're exactly right, Kate, and we talked about it when Chase got offered his re-ride. This is a great thing for Chase, for the fact is, now he kind of calms down, and he just goes to riding bulls. His shoe procedure's great. He's got under his hips where he's been struggling with that a little bit more, and I truthfully believe, because he'd already been on one, he just settled in and rode bulls like he knows how to do. Coach and his best friend now, I'm calling him on the back of the chutes, cheering him on. Did Silvano, they just become best friends? I, I think it may have already happened. This is just you know, adding to it now. You can see just how much every ride means to Chase Outlaw, who just passed 200 qualified rides. And they're building quite the bond between veteran and young gun. And Mason's starting to show a lot of energy, just like Chase. Too tall is not too much for Mason Moody. He's there for the eight and gets Nashville another ride. Picked up his first qualified ride, his PBR team season debut weekend back in Ridgedale. Now finds it here again in Fort Worth. <laughs> Nashville has kind of stitched together their lineup here, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Right now, let's talk about a great ride. Mason Moody stepping in there, and much to the delight of all of his team. We've seen Justin McBride smile more in the last few minutes than we have most of the season. He's got a couple of big scores on the board. Outlaw Mason Moody looking good here tonight. By the way, that bull that he got his first PBR team's qualified ride on, it was that one. Too tall. Outlaw outlast again. Does not get better than that for Outlaw Nation, and Nashville is on the board. 
And for Nashville, this is a great thing. For the other teams, this could get scary because this is the last guy you want to catch fire before going into Vegas because what this guy can do when he is wired just right and his momentum is set perfectly, that's a guy that can put big numbers on the board. Chase Outlaw putting big numbers on the board, but he's putting a lot of energy in the locker room. You got to love what this guy's bringing to the Stampede. Yeah, Outlaw wakes up with a lot of energy. I mean, it's if he's awake, it's high energy, man. It's spreading through the locker room. He is fired up, and you guys are on the board. Great job. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Fired up, light a spark, on fire. I'm catching what you two are throwing right here. And we're putting you in the lineup, and here he is. Aboard Ivy League. Come on, Caden! On the bull that's delivered the best score we've seen all season, here comes the 18-year-old in Nashville. Is three for three on a Friday night. How is it exciting is it to watch an 18-year-old like this in this position step up? And it goes back to the leaders of the team, starting with Chase Outlaw and then to Mason, and they're just following suit. Just nobody wants to let the team down, and Nashville is actually looking like a team. I'm telling you, the energy back here is infectious, guys. It would make anybody want to rise to the occasion and get on a bull. Caden Loud just put together a great ride. Came in kind of off the bench. Congratulations there from his coach. Caden, I'm going to spin you around here. Jumping straight into the action, getting a big ride for your team. How's it feel? Feels real good. Everyone on the Nashville sideline said a prayer, and then Justin McBride was in Silvano's ear. The clock says eight. If it stands, that is the sweet success of 500 career rides. But it's not going to come without some drama. It is under review. Of course it's under review. Anytime something this special happens, they have to review it. They don't have to, but they're going to just so it makes me a little bit more nervous. I've been waiting for this. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, give him that one. His true religion, the bull, that gives him the memorable right. ride of 500. Silvano just heard the sweet sound of the eight-second whistle for the 500th time. The three-time world champ makes history. Just the fourth rider ever to do it. How impressive is that? Just time and time again. To, for a lot of guys, just to put their hand in the rope 500 times, let alone hear the eight-second whistle that many times, that's incredible. A celebration every rider starts their career hoping for, but one few will ever understand the moment of. Let's go to Matt. We are in the middle of a very historic moment in the life and the career of Silvano Alves and in the history of professional bull riding. I want to welcome the CEO of the PBR, Mr. Sean Gleason. Sean, what an incredible moment. What an incredible champion this guy has been. You know, I love this man. I've told him that many times. He's a three-time PBR world champion. The only guy that's won a back-to-back, -back, and now he's one of four guys in the PBR that has made 500 rides for us. And every one of them, blood, sweat, and tears. He's a PBR blue blood, and I love this man. The fans love Silvano Alves as well. We're going to make that presentation. A beautiful Montana silversmith. As we said, only the fourth one that says 500 qualified rides. We talk about the resume, the three world titles, the team's championship, and now another historical milestone in your career. To be here with your team on the back of the buck and shoots, your family in attendance, can you put into words how special this moment is, Silvano? Yes, it's hard to so, say some words, but God prepared me. Thank God, God and Jesus Christ first. And uh, thank PBR, thank all my fans. I'm so grateful for 
all the, my parents, all my fans, all the PBR are doing for me. Thank you, Nashville Stampede, <laughs> trusting my job, ride bulls. Thank you, everybody, come here. I need to just ride my bulls for show you guys. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, God, doing everything in my, my life. On behalf of every bull riding fan around the world, congratulations, and thank you for 500. Good luck to many more. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the show tonight. The storied 15-year professional career of Silvano just added a cherry on top, and he's not done yet. Career ride number 500 with his entire family here in attendance to watch. It is, of course, our Kubota ride of the night. And by the way, that was the fourth ride of the night for the Stampede, the first time all season they've posted four. That's right. They just stepped up. The team is really coming together. But let's not take away from this. 500 rides. I just can't emphasize enough how absolutely impressive that is on a storybook career that is not done yet. So much to celebrate for the Stampede and Silvano Alves becoming just the fourth to ever do it. Galermi Marchi, JB Mooney, Mike Lee, and now Silvano Alves on the 500 career ride list. What a list. McBride said what they did last night, that's an everyday thing for Nashville. And age is just a number. Caden Loud is coming in clutch for Nashville. And the 18-year-old gets it done again. When you're only 18 years old and you have somebody like Justin McBride that's coaching you and believing in you, you can move mountains like you said earlier, Matt. It's one of them things that all you need to do is believe and you have somebody else that believes in you. It's amazing what you can do. Take a look at this. Back-to-back -back eight second rides this weekend. Another big one away from his hand. Justin McBride loving what he's seeing from the teenagers. So is everybody else. The score, 88 points. And Nashville takes the lead away from the Carolina Cowboys. It is one to one in the Stampede holding on. Here's Chase. Outlaw taking a shot on his way down and still trying to get out of harm's way. Guys down here, uh, Chase Outlaws, you can hear yeah, we can, the we can, agony. We can hear the pain coming through the entire arena right now as Outlaw in excruciating pain. and. and if you know anything about this sport, you know that Chase Outlaw is not one that doesn't have a high pain threshold. And so to hear him in agony like that is. Well, we need to know if we get a score or not. Certainly a scary so moment. The and the business continues here as you see Coach Justin McBride. They don't have an extra rider. Did he, did he make the whistle? That's what we've okay. got to know. Sliding up with three seconds remaining on that Tractor's Fly Company shoot clock. Here's Silvano. Write it down. It is 5.01 for Alves. Silvano rides Bubba G for the third time in his career. Yeah, and guys, down here behind the chutes, and not only is he making this crowd happy and, and follow what he's doing, but this entire organization of Nashville Stampede is on their feet as well. There's clapping, cheering, and he's bringing motivation to this entire team. Not only is, that, is he at 501, but he continues to just lead the way and lead by example for this, uh, for this Nashville team. You know what else he does? He helps his team move to 2-0 and on the weekend, and now the Nashville Stampede starting to hit full stride at the end of the regular season. And we can't forget, they just won this game, offered a re-ride, which they couldn't take. So realistically, they won this only with four riders, not five. Talk about playing the cards you're dealt. Justin McBride has done that to perfection this weekend. The matchups have certainly 
been right on the money. But again, you talk about Nashville not having anywhere to go because this is the team they have assembled because of what you're seeing here. Nashville has become smashed field. Take a look at the guys that are out with injury. We saw Chase Outlaw just a couple of moments ago now with the leg injury. Mason Taylor has been out for quite some time dealing with the groin, hopefully. And uh, Justin McBride, Mason Taylor confirming earlier this week, the plan is to have him back in Las Vegas. Dinner Barbosa dealt with the back issue last season, the knee and elbow this season. Kaiki Pacheco, the broken leg. Hopefully he'll be returning soon. Jess Lockwood out for the unforeseeable future as well. I mean, that five guys right there is a championship lineup. It is. We talk all the time about it can't just be one guy that makes the team. You need production from your whole line. But when your whole starting lineup is out, that changes the whole dynamic of the team. Well, called up Lucas, and here he is on Gold Creek. And in his PBR team's debut, he comes down early here. Souza just getting the call, and Cold Creek taking him down in just two seconds. And Brendan, we joked, I'll call it lightly, about you joining the Arizona squad, but Nashville actually almost needed you. Yeah, well, I was just back here talking to Justin McBride, and uh, I, I, I almost... I almost asked him, Kate, did he need me to get on one, but I knew better that he had actually seen my career towards the end, and I knew that I really had no chance of being part of this team. But it is amazing, honestly, all jokes aside, to stand back here and look at the injuries that they have standing on the back of the shoots and the quality of bull riders, it's absolutely amazing because they have got a star-studded and a talented team back here, but they are just plagued with injuries. Oh, Moody gets forward quickly. And after finding the whistle here on Friday, it's two buck offs in a row. He's had some big moments in his debut season, but the back-to-back -back rides are would have become very tough, not just for him, but rookies at this level, unless you're Cassio Diaz. It has. It, he's really been struggling. This is a kid with all the ability in the world but stringing it together. And that's what separates the absolutely best from the guys that are just average. And it usually has nothing to do with their actual riding ability. It's all on their mental toughness and being able to deal with the ups and downs and stringing the consistency together. Go on, go on, Tomato. Go on, Tomato. Keep going. Cut loose, cut loose, cut loose. It won't be enough to get the win for his team. But for Alves, finding a resurgence 15 years into his career, he is perfect here in Fort Worth to cap off the regular season. He really is, and this is the fourth time he's been on this bull. He's put up big numbers. The bull actually got him on the ground, just one of them three. Now he's rode him three out of four. And this is what he does. He just quietly goes about staying on bulls. We talked about that he's never the guy that gets the biggest scores, but he obviously rides the most as history dictates. I think there's a lot of significance with that ride too because going into Las Vegas, Silvano Alves just keeps the train on the tracks, if you will. And we know that when they got to Vegas a year ago, they were the Cinderella story. They came from behind. We'll see what happens. Certainly hope so. And I think they can. Sneaky situation brought it from the very first jump out of the gate, but DeSouza does not care. He's there for the eight, and we've got a qualified ride to start this one. Look, and that shows you the work ethic right there, the willingness to do whatever it takes. He had to work for all eight seconds. He did, and not only did he have to work, he had to be patient because I can pick this ride apart on a few things that he did wrong. You should never put your free hand in front of your face or across your chest, but if you do, most guys try to correct it the wrong way, and he knew he did it. He was patient, put it back in the right position, and gets the whistle, and that is huge. 85 and three quarters. Nashville first to nod, first to strike. As that clock is counting down, Midnight Magic, the bull. It 
doesn't matter what happened in the regular season. You got to ride in Las Vegas to win a title. And that is what Almeida just did. All that matters for Justin McBride is that Almeida has ridden two out of his last two. Exactly. Hey, I mean, right now is the perfect time to get on a hot streak. It doesn't matter about those first 15. It matters what you do in Vegas. Nashville proved that last year. They're showing it again. He has fought for 10 weeks, mentally had to battle, going back to the locker room, buck off after buck off after buck off. The emotion coming from Almeida is because that all turns around in Las Vegas. 87 and a half awarded for the effort. In his PBR team's debut, meets up with a bull that tells you quickly you're playing in the major leagues. Preacher's kid gets him down to two. Way to go, Coach Justin McBride. Just, I mean, way to get a guy acclimated really quick. Just kidding. Take a look at this Bass Pro Shops replay. You talk about a handful of bull. This bull absolutely brings it. And then, Webb, quickly, you and the other guys on the U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team getting to work. You're busy down there in the dirt. Well, that preacher's kid, and no matter how old he is, when he first come on the scene, now seeing this bull being 12 years old, this bull likes to chase us around. He likes what he does. That's a bucking bull that enjoys his job. Look at Webb. He's not just part of the TV team fighting the bulls. He's picking Let's up go. ropes. Let's go, guys. MVP. Yeah, and, I'm calling it. And he's motivating his guys out there, you know, saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's what I love about the camaraderie this team has. It's Honestly, we're talking about PBR teams. That team of bullfighters might be my favorite team to watch week in and week out. And not only do these guys do this for a living, they do it because they love it. You Absolutely. tell me one other guy that would hurt his ankle that, that like that, run out, get it taped, and come back to save his friends. And not even go to sports medicine. Get it taped on the back of the bucket shoot to get right back in there. Well done, Cody Webster. What a great team. Tough, talented, fun to watch. Oh, world titles. I mean, that's how invested he is in this team. He's got to hear the whistle for Nashville to take the lead. Vegas. Give him the key to the city. Give him the gold buckles. Give him all the accolades. Give him another chance to help his team run in a title. Look out. Silvano Alves is locked in. He never ceases to amaze me, and especially because he is the leader of this team. And not only does he lead by example on how he rides, he makes the rest of the team feel comfortable. He's constantly coaching them, constantly helping them, and always letting them know it's bull riding. There is always a chance. And not only does he take the lead, he puts the pressure on Oklahoma. 88 and a quarter, that's the best score that we've seen. Four third out for the Stampede all season. Now's the time. does not matter what team fans came in here cheering for. They wanted to see the three-time champ make the whistle for Ricky Vaughn. Oh, and they are reviewing this on time. Justin McBride threw the review flag. Got to review that one. I think it's going to be close, guys. No matter the outcome of this, think about what we're seeing here, guys. We're seeing a 35-year-old that has had his career rejuvenated and not just rejuvenated his career Go ahead. Bumper down, bumper down, bumper down. but gotten him Go back forward. to a Come place right there. No score. where Last challenge. he just took on one of the rankest bulls in the world season two have been game winners Loud and the Stampede are rolling back. Nashville's on the board. We thought, let's call it what it is, the three losers from the first three games were going to come into this last game of the night. And I think a lot of people thought 
Oh, we're just going to see who can squeak through from start to finish tonight. This night has been everything we could have hoped for as Bull Riding fans. You came into this game saying, look at everything Carolina has. Best of luck, Nashville, Missouri. It's going to be Everest to climb. And look who's on the board. The only thing I can say is it is bull riding and anything can happen and it does happen. And you know it what is. I, what I'm seeing here <laughs> in this game is Cinderella's got a twin sister and they keep punching each other in the face to see who's going to get that slipper and try to move on to the dance tomorrow night. This is so much fun to watch. Never seen this Cinderella story before, but we're writing a new one. I love it. I love everything about it. Justin McBride's got to love that kid. 89 and three quarter points. That's a big one for the Stampede. To be full mature men right here, right now. He gets inside and comes down. And with that, the defending PBR team's champions leave Las Vegas on day one. Cinderella did not return to the ball this season. And uh, the, the times that we've highlighted the great speech from Justin McBride, and unfortunately it comes down to the guys getting out there and executing, and Nashville just could not execute well enough here today.